everyone. So I've had some thoughts for some time now regarding Hollywood and entertainment in general. And this recent Disney shareholders meeting really kind of crystallized my thoughts in many ways. For a few years now, we've seen popular entertainment and popular IPs in particular fall into what's come to be known as woke storytelling. Now, I think there are different ideas about what woke is or isn't. For my part, I define woke as a mixture of far left beliefs, and these include third wave intersectional feminism, critical race theory, a hefty dose of LGBTQ messaging, and Marxist socialist propaganda of various sorts, among other things. Not everyone's going to agree with that, probably, and may define it differently, but that's just what I'm saying to make it clear where I'm coming from here. Now, as we've seen this woke messaging start to spread through popular entertainment, there's been pushback from some fans, objecting to characters and franchises being used as a platform, as it's often termed by Hollywood types. And among fans who are opposed to it, there's been this conviction or anticipation that there will come a point when Hollywood will finally reach what I refer to as post-woke clarity. Like a glutton who finally realizes they have to stop eating so much, or an alcoholic or drug addict who realizes they have to change their ways or they're going to destroy themselves. They'll reach this moment when the financial losses have grown so great or the fan outrage has grown so undeniable that the powers that be in Hollywood will realize they've got to course correct. They have to change and start listening to fans, ditch the wokeness, and get back to focusing on entertaining. And for a while now, there's been a conviction that we're getting to that moment with the downturn in the economy, soaring inflation, and a post-lockdown hangover finally coming back to impact many businesses financially, Hollywood will have to come to its senses and start making changes and begin moving towards a new post-woke era, free of all the nonsense that we've seen in film, television, streaming, comics, gaming, book publishing, you name it, whatever. And we did see some hints of that over the last year, with AT&T buying Warner Brothers Discovery and David Zaslav coming in to start cutting budgets, cutting personnel, cutting whole departments, tech companies laying off people in the thousands, and now the recent Disney layoffs, and all indications are that these layoffs are just the start. There are thousands more to come. These financial shocks and the resulting efforts to trim costs would lead Hollywood, and I'm using Hollywood as kind of a shorthand for popular entertainment in general here, by the way. This would lead to Hollywood ditching the wokeness. They'd kick out the bad actors, the fraudulent creators, as some call them, and I think that's a good way to put it. I'm talking about people who've been the most high profile and done the most damage in terms of popular culture. And really, I'm focusing on the genres that have been historically a part of what we would call nerd culture or geek culture, for lack of a better term. Sci-fi, fantasy, comic superheroes, role-playing games mainly, but also video games, gaming culture, all that. I'm talking about the usual suspects in these discussions. Disney, Netflix, Paramount, HBO as well as individuals like Jar Jar Abrams, Alex Klutzman, Kathleen Kennedy, Kevin Feige, Victoria Alonso, the list goes on. And Alonso's recent dismissal from Disney seemed to signal that a change might finally be coming. But this recent Disney shareholder meeting call that just happened, and I don't know if you're aware of what took place, but several shareholders called into this meeting and took Disney and Bob Iger to task for some of the things they've been doing, particularly promoting LGBTQ culture and practices, transgender practices such as drag strip shows and sex change surgery to grade school children being the most objectionable examples, but hardly the only ones. In this venue, 
Iger had the perfect opportunity to signal that a change was indeed taking place. After all, if they indeed fired Alonzo because of the woke direction she's taking the MCU in and they want to mend fences with the audience, Iger could have signaled something to that effect. Instead, he largely danced around addressing any complaints directly and reaffirmed with no equivocation that what Disney is doing now in terms of storytelling is integral to Disney's values as a company and they will not stop pushing the message, as it were. He did seem to suggest that it might not be as heavy-handed in the future, but he made it clear Disney's not going to change. Now, there have been some hints here and there of the wokeness getting toned down in some films and TV shows. Uh, I think a good example is that Superman and Lois show. Some people will say, well, it's not woke. I disagree. You're just not looking close enough. Again, they're toning it down. They aren't beating you over the head with it, but it's there. It's there in the way Lois scolds Clark all the time as if he were her child rather than Superman. In the way that Clark, whenever he has flashbacks to his childhood, Jonathan Kent is absent. He's not around. It's just he has Martha and that's it. The way he constantly needs other characters like Steel to help him, even though he's freaking Superman. The last Batman movie is another example. It's woke in the way all the father figures in the story are negative because, you know, patriarchy is bad. Okay? In the way that Catwoman complains about white privilege. In the way that white incels are the villains. We may see more of that, where they aren't wearing their wokeness on their sleeve so much, hoping to work it in subtly so that people don't notice it, giving them time to get used to it before dialing the propaganda up later in the future, when people are more acclimatized to it, so the frog doesn't notice that it's boiling. But I think fans really need to come to grips with the reality that we're never going to reach a point where Hollywood says, Wow, okay, we've really screwed up. Let's focus on making money and giving the audience what it wants again. I'm coming to believe that will never happen. I thought it might for the last year or so with Zaslav and all the budget cuts and layoffs at major studios, and with Alonzo's departure being seemingly the clearest signal that a new direction was imminent. But then, in the shareholder call, Iger stated in no uncertain terms, Disney is not changing. Now, I don't know if you watch WDW Pro's channel, but he's been covering Disney for years and seems to have genuine contacts and good information where Disney is concerned and with what's going on behind closed doors there. He and Valiant Renegade, another YouTuber who also covers Disney, both said that they have been told by their contacts inside Disney, and this was independent of one another. You know, they were both told this by different people. That Disney is fully aware of what's going on regarding the discontent among some fans, the frustration and anger at the direction that Disney has taken, and that they are losing a significant part of their audience because of this stuff. And they were both told Disney does not care. They don't care if they're alienating a significant part of the audience. They don't care if they're losing certain demographic groups and are going to suffer financially because of it. Disney is determined to continue pushing the message anyway. The reasoning they were given is that Disney figures that the people who are complaining are older boomers, Gen Xers, and such, and that while they may lose money in the short term, in the long term, the generations coming after us, millennials and Zoomers, I guess, are going to embrace this stuff. And in the long run, they'll come out on top, probably because the leftist takeover of the educational system is so complete that they've been fed this stuff almost from the cradle. And hey, honestly, I can't say they're wrong. Another recent example is Paramount. They've got to be losing a fortune on Star Trek over the last five years or so. I mean, really, the only thing that's been a reliable moneymaker for Paramount over I don't know how many years, is Tom Cruise. And that's it. They're nearly $16 billion in debt. They've got to be desperate to make money. Surely they'll move back to giving Star Trek fans what they want. Just look at season three of Picard, right? 
Now, I'm not going to get into whether that's really a change or just more of the same. Some people have said, hey, look, uh, Star Trek's getting better, right? Well, now Paramount has announced a new Star Trek series set at Starfleet Academy, which will feature all new characters. And from the sound of it, it's going to be a cross between Star Trek and like a CW queener drama. It's an obvious sign that they're tacking towards new fans, not old fans. And you can bet that with a younger cast, the show is only going to get more woke, only now with more feelings in hallways. My point here is, like Disney, they're not changing, except to get worse, probably. Fans need to stop having this conviction or this expectation that, oh, if we just get rid of so-and-so, things will get better. If we just get rid of Jar Jar, things will get better. If we just get rid of Chibnall, things will get better. If we just get rid of KK, things will get better. They're not going to get better. These people in Hollywood aren't teenagers going through a phase. These are adult ideologues who will make million-dollar salaries whether these films or shows make any money or not. And if they do somehow get shown the door... They'll get nice, big, fat, golden parachutes that allow them to live comfortably without working again a day in their damn life. And they'll be replaced by someone just as ideologically driven as they are. These studios and big corporations are infested with these people now. And you're not going to get rid of them just by firing someone here and there. That isn't going to bring about some abrupt change. Remember when everyone wanted Jar Jar away from Star Trek? And we got it. He left Star Trek. And did things get better? No, they got worse. Remember when we all wanted him away from Star Wars? And then we got that. Did things get better? Well, maybe marginally for a little while. But is it really getting better in any significant way? Is there any indication that they're going to erase the sequel trilogy? No. Remember when we just wanted Chibnall away from Doctor Who? And we got it. He's gone. And are things getting better? I don't see any indication that they are. There's been no hint of any kind that the timeless child will be retconned or fixed in any way. Not that I've noticed. This far-left ideology rules Hollywood now. It isn't just a bug, it's a feature. This is what Hollywood is. And people need to stop walking around expecting that Hollywood is going to come out of some spell and change. They're not going to change. Chapek tried to change Disney, and what happened to him? He got the boot. These SJWs in Hollywood aren't going to let anyone come in and undo what they're doing. And if the CEO of Disney can't weather the storm and fix this stuff, do you really think John Favreau is going to do it? If he should somehow wind up running Lucasfilm, the people below him aren't going to let him make any big changes. If he tries, they'll just brand him a racist or sexist, and maybe they'll try to meet to him. I don't know, but they'll run him out of there just like they got rid of Chapek. And Filoni, too, if he even wants to. I'm not convinced Filoni would even try. I think he may be fine with the way things are. But you need to stop thinking that someone is going to come into Lucasfilm or Paramount or Warner Brothers or wherever and clear out all the scum and send the Lucasfilm story group packing or send Secret Hideout packing. That someone is going to come in like Hercules cleaning the Aegean stables and clean out all the crap. It's not going to happen. I think fans need to start thinking more in terms of, as Young Ripper or Eric July puts it, a parallel economy and putting our money someplace else, putting it into creators that do things more in line with your values, whether that's crowdfunding comics, supporting independent authors, buying OSR or retro RPGs or fan films or something else, because Hollywood, I'm afraid, is just a lost cause. It's an old axiom that you can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. A person who doesn't want to change isn't going to change unless they're motivated to. Hollywood doesn't want to be helped. It doesn't want to change. The people in charge there are never going to suffer any consequences financially, no matter how bad things might get for these companies anyway. If worse comes to worse and the company finally reaches some kind of disaster point, they'll just fire everybody, strip the company down to the bare walls, and then sell it to some bigger company with even bigger pockets. And if they can't do that, they'll probably just go beg to the government for a bailout like the banks got, and they'll probably get it. 
There's no moment of post-woke clarity coming to Hollywood. This is what we've got now. And we can either just accept it or we can start looking at alternatives and planning accordingly. Personally, I vote for the latter. Anyway, I'll stop there. I've been going on for a while, but let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree or disagree with what I've said here? Let me know in the comments and please like the video before you go and sub to the channel and hit the bell for notifications and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.